What is up, everybody? This is Mr. Tui, creator of the Digital SAT Crash Course Series. And in this video, I'm going to teach you three of the most powerful hacks you can use right now to get an instant score increase on the Digital SAT. These are the exact same hacks I use with my students to achieve over 200 point score increases on the Digital SAT. They're proven to work and they can work for you too. So sit back, relax, and watch all the way through to the end. The last hack is going to blow your mind. Digital SAT hack number one. Don't read the notes. All right, so the first digital SAT hack I want to share with you is to ignore the bullet points on the notes questions at the end of the reading and writing modules. You know this question type where they give you a bunch of bullet points, then you got to answer a question based on the notes. So the funny thing about these questions is that 98% of the time, you can just ignore the notes completely. Just read the question carefully and then pick the answer choice that most directly addresses the question. Here's an example of how to answer them from my digital SAT crash course video course. Here's the hack. Listen carefully, Catherine, anybody watching the recording. Here's the hack. You don't need to read the notes. You don't need to read the notes. All you need to do is read the question. And really, it's not even the whole, it's just the first sentence in the question. And the right answer is going to directly address the question, and none of the wrong answers will address it. That's it. You just need to read the question, understand the question, and pick the answer that addresses the question without reading the notes. I'll show you why. So you've got question 32. You see that up on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want you to read question 32. Uh, okay. Just the question, right? Don't worry about the notes right now. Okay. The student wants to present the study and its findings. What choice most effectively uses relevant, relevant information from the notes to accomplish this goal? Okay. So all the notes questions, they're going to end with the same statement at the end, the same question at the end. They'll say, which choice most effectively uses relevant information from the notes mm -hmm. to accomplish this goal? You see that on 32. You see the same thing on 33. So really, you could argue you don't even need to read the whole question. You just need to read the first part of the question, which is this. And we got a laser focus on it. The student wants to present the study and its findings. That's the question. Does that make some sense? Okay. In fact, I'm going to highlight it. The student wants to present the study and its findings. There we go. Okay. That's the question. Okay. So the right answer is going to present the study and its findings. That's it. Mm -hmm. So let's read okay. answer choice A. In 2021, that what guy. that is, yeah. studied <laughs> Pertisor, I have no idea how that, yeah. jaw bones, and was initially unsure if bones belong to juveniles or adults. Does answer choice A present the study and its findings? I don't think it does. does I don't it? think so either. I don't think so either. I mean, where. Does it present the study? Uh, it tells us what he studied. Does it present mm -hmm. the findings? No. There's nothing about findings here. Nothing. It says he was initially unsure if the bones belonged to juvenile, juveniles or adults. But there's no findings there. And it barely presents the study if it even does it. Does that make some sense? Yes. It's not answer choice A. Be gone. Try answer choice B. Okay. Pretosaur jawbones located in the Sahara Desert were the focus of a 2021 study. Does answer is B, present the study and its findings. No. Uh, no, it does not. Is that pretty clear? Yes. It tells you like the topic of the study. That's it. Doesn't present the study, doesn't present the findings. And it's tricky, right? Because like answer choice A and answer choice B are definitely going to be referenced in the notes. That's information in the notes, which is why I recommend just avoiding them because you're going to be like, oh, I'll go back to the notes and, oh, it mentions that. Oh, it mentions that. Does it answer the question? <laughs> no. Try C. Okay. In a 2021 study, Chinasumi Turan used advanced microscopic techniques to analyze the jawbones of Pretosaurus, flying reptiles that existed millions of years ago. Does answer choice C present the study and its findings? I don't think so. No. Is there any findings there? No. No. What does answer C do? What does it describe? It's describing like her techniques. The techniques, the methodology. And by the way, they could ask a different question. Leave everything else the same, but they ask which presents the methodology of the study. Answer choice C would be great. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So they're not asking about the methodology. They're asking about the presenting the study and its findings. And so far, it's neither A nor B nor C. Is that clear? Yes. Do you see how specific these questions are? Mm -hmm. Right? The question, so many students are going to read this and ignore the question and be like, which has factually correct information? And then you're just going to get confused. Because all of them are probably factually correct. Yeah. No, we've got to present the study and its findings. None of them do it so far. I sure hope D works. Go ahead and read D. 
In 2021 study, Chinasamy Tehran determined that pre... Pterosaur, I think. Yeah, pterosaur. Pterosaur jaw bones located in the Sahara Desert had few growth lines relative to the bones of fully grown pterosaurs and thus belong to juveniles. Does Answerist D present the study? Yes. Fine. Heck yeah, it does. You don't even have to read the notes. It's the only one that comes close to presenting a study. Mm-hmm. It's the only one that addresses the findings at all. Does that make some sense? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Don't read the notes. Don't. Digital SAT hack number two. Start with the grammar questions on the reading and writing modules. All right. So the second digital SAT hack that I want to share with you is to start with the grammar questions in the middle of the reading and writing module, like around question 15 or 16. Here's why. So the easiest questions on the digital SAT reading and writing section are the grammar and notes questions on the second half of the reading and writing module. With some basic prep, you should be getting a perfect score or close to it on those questions. So start there and make sure you're taking your time reading the questions carefully and going through the right processes. I show you how to approach the grammar and notes questions in more detail in my digital SAT crash course video course. Just click the link in the description below to access the full version of the course. Once you've answered all the questions on the second half of the module, go back to the beginning of the reading and writing module. Answer the vocab and easier reading questions at the beginning of the module. And if you run out of time, you're only missing the hardest questions in the middle of the reading and writing module. Those are the questions you're least likely to get anyway. Most students that work their way from the beginning to the end of the reading and writing module, like normal, they get stuck on the hardest questions right in the middle of the module. And that's especially true on a harder module, too. Then they're rushing through the grammar and notes questions, making a ton of mistakes, if they even finish the module at all. So don't do that. Start with the grammar and notes around question 15. Nail those questions. Then go to the beginning of the module and answer those questions in order. And even if you don't get to three or four of the toughest reading questions in the middle of a hard module two, you can still get a score in the mid 700s as long as you nail the rest of the test. So get the ones right you should be getting right and don't drive yourself crazy about the toughest questions. Digital SAT hack number three, use Desmos to solve equations. All right, so the third digital SAT hack I wanna share with you is to use Desmos to solve equations. Basically any question where they're asking you to solve for a single variable, like this one here, or this one here. You can just enter the equations into Desmos to find the right answer instantly. Here's a few examples for my Digital SAT Crash Course video course. What is one of the solutions to the given equation? Okay, okay. Now, when I saw this question the first time, I was like, oh, okay, they're testing me on factoring, right? Is that kind of like where your mind goes when you see a question like this, Emma? Is factoring? Are you yeah. familiar with factoring? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the standard way to do it. You've seen questions like this in a math class. You've got to like break up this expression here into like two sets of, of terms in parentheses, you know what I'm saying? And then you can kind of like solve for Z if we break that mm-hmm. up into its factors. You can do that. That's fine, right? If you're like really, really comfortable with it, but you don't have to do that at all. Because if we can graph that equation, basically, which we can, right? All we do is just like turn that zero into a Y, essentially, and it'll graph, uh, you know, we'll get a parabola. And then we just find out where the Y value is zero on that graph. And then that'll give us uh, the solutions for the equation. And I want to show you what that looks like. So open up that Desmos calculator and I'm going to bring it up on my end as well. Okay. All right. So let's graph this equation. Okay. Now, the great thing about the Desmos calculator is that you don't even need, like most of the time, you don't even need to enter like Y equals. We can just like enter in the left-hand side of the equation and it'll graph it for us automatically. So uh, I recommend just, let's just turn that Z into an X. So I'm just going to punch this in. And those of you uh, watching, I want you to try this sort of on your end as well. Just type in x squared plus 10x minus 24. And then you could say equals y, but you don't even have to do that. You'll get a parabola. Okay, so let's look. We see this parabola, okay? And then um, we know that uh, the y value has got to be zero, basically, at the solutions for this equation. So all I gotta do is look for the x-intercepts. We've got one right here. Yeah, so at that point, the x value is two and the y value is zero. Yeah. So one of the solutions for that equation has to be two because that's the x value that gives us a zero for y. Does that make some sense, Emma? Yes. Okay, good, good. We've got another solution here, okay? Let's go to this point here, this other x-intercept. What's the x value? at that point, at that x-intercept? Negative 12. Negative 12. Because the point negative 12 comma zero is another uh, x-intercept. So you've got two possible answers here. X could be either two 
or x could be negative 12, and they'll take either one. What is the positive solution to the given equation? Ooh, what are we solving for here, Maria? Um, I guess the solution to x that's positive? Yeah, yeah, the positive solution, right? And we can sort of assume like there's going to be multiple solutions for this equation, right? Because they're saying oh, there's a positive solution, there's probably a negative solution as well, which I think there is. But we need the positive solution, whatever that is. Okay, does that make some sense? What we're solving for here? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Now, of course, there's an algebraic way to do this. Multiply both sides by x plus six, and then you like distribute the x, and then like combine some like terms, but then you have to factor again. It's a, kind of a complicated path. There's a lot of steps to do it. There's a much easier way to do this using the Desmos calculator, which is kind of surprising because you look at this like, how can you use a, a graphing calculator to solve this? Well, if we take that x term that's on the right-hand side, we subtract x from both sides, we can basically put all the terms on the left-hand side and set the right-hand side equal to zero and then just graph the left-hand side. And we can use that to find the solutions for x that give us a zero for y, basically. Okay. So... Let's do that. I wanna, I'm gonna put all the terms on the left-hand side of the equation. We're gonna subtract x on both sides. Remember, that's the golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you gotta do the other side of the equation, okay? So we'll get something like this. We'll get 55 over x plus six minus x, and then the x's here on the right-hand side cancel out, equals zero. Take a look at that. Maria, does it make sense how I just subtracted x on both sides to get all the terms onto the left-hand side and set the right-hand side equal to zero? Does that make some sense? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay good, good. Yeah, and, and you might see this, right? Some equations where you've got isolated variable, but like, you know, you've got x terms on both sides of the equation. Just find a way to get all the terms on one side, right? And remember, just whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other side of the equation, and you're good. But now that we've got this, we can graph this puppy. And we'll just find out where, which x values give us a zero for y. And then we don't have to do any more algebraic operations, okay? So let's bring up that Desmos calculator. Now, it's a little tricky here. We've got uh, some fractions to enter in. But it's going to look something like this. 55 divided by x plus 6. And then i got to get out of that fraction. There's a little art to just, like, even entering things into Desmos. But you got to make sure that you're doing it accurately. But that's all we need. Again, I could say equals y, that's fine, but you don't need to in Desmos. You can just enter in the left-hand side of the equation. That's good enough. Now, let's take a look. So you got to be careful here, right? Remember, we're looking for the x values that give us a zero for y. Okay? The x values that give us a zero for y. Maria, do you see which x value gives us a zero for y? Right? It's tricky because we've got a y-intercept and we've got an x-intercept. But which x value gives us a zero for y? I think we've got two x values that give us a zero for y. A 5 and a negative 11. Yeah, exactly, right? So when, when we're trying to find the x values that give us a 0 for y, just look at the x-intercepts. There's a 5 right there, right? Because the point 5 comma 0 is on the line. So one of the solutions is 5. Has to be. And then the other solution is negative 11. Because that's the other x-intercept, right? The when you graph the equation, the solutions are always going to be the x-intercepts. Always. So be careful here. What's the right answer? 5 or negative 11? Negative 11. Read the question again, Maria. Or I guess 5, sorry. Right, so yeah, what is the positive it. solution, right? Do you see it to the given equation? Yeah, if you answer negative 11, you get it wrong, right? We need the positive solution. So be careful and don't lose sight of what the question's asking us. That could be a little bit tricky. But just make sure you answer the positive solution. Okay, Emma, you are up. Go ahead and read question 20 for us, please. What is the smallest solution to the given equation? Okay, what are we solving for here? I guess we're solving kind of for x. We're solving for x, but it's real specific. Really focus on that question. I mean, and, and literally, you probably just reread the question. The smallest solution. The smallest solution. solution, right? Which means there's going to be multiple solutions, and one's going to be bigger than the other. We want the smallest solution. Is, is that clear, Emma? Yes. Okay, good, good. Um, so, uh, once again, this is a tough... Uh, boy, I mean, like, whew. <laughs> how would you feel about doing the algebra on this question? How would you feel? It would take a while. It would take a while. Even if you know what you're doing. I could, do this, I'm like, oh, I could do it. I'm going to like square both sides and then like, oh, I've got a foil x minus 2 times x minus 2 and then combine like terms and then probably refactor. you got to do all that if you're going step by step. Don't mess with that. Let's put all the terms on one side, set the other side equal to zero and graph it. We've got our answers. Does that make sense, Emma? 
Yes. Okay, great. Now, how are we going to get all the terms on one side of the equation? What are we going to do here? Subtract the right side. Subtract, from both yeah, sides. exactly. Subtract the right side from both sides. So we're subtracting, right. and that's going to equal zero because the right hand side is canceled out. Let's graph it. The trickiest part on this question really is just entering it in like accurately into Desmos. That's the trickiest part, which is why you got to practice this. You don't want to be figuring out Desmos like the day of the test. You really got to practice using it. You got to use those parentheses as well. X minus two. And square it. Now make sure you're squaring X minus two in parentheses, right? You're not squaring stuff outside of the square root sign that uh, exponent is inside the root sign. And then we'll get outside the root sign. Minus 3x plus 34, all inside the square root sign. Okay. Emma, let's, uh, let's find the solutions. How do we find the solutions now that we've graphed it? We find the x. Yeah. Intercept. Find the x-intercepts, because those are the x values that are going to give us a 0 for y. What are the x-intercepts? Uh, 3, negative 3, and 10. Yeah, negative 3 and 10 are x-intercepts. So what's the right answer? What's the negative 3. Yeah, negative 3 is the smallest solution. Booyah. If you found these digital SAT hacks helpful, you definitely want to get access to the full version of my digital SAT crash course video course. Just click the link in the description below to get access. Thanks again for watching, and be on the lookout for more digital SAT videos coming out soon. Thanks.